I know the iPhone 17 has barely been out for two months, but we're already talking about the iPhone 18. That's because these next few years of iPhone are set to be the most exciting in the iPhone's history. Apple has four phases of this plan to reinvent the iPhone, and we've already seen phase one with the iPhone Air this year. Next year, we're going to see phase two, the first ever foldable iPhone, the iPhone Ultra. But that device has such a complex story that it deserves its own video. For now, let's talk about the three more modest iPhone models coming in 2026. First, well, before the iPhone 18 series comes out, we're expecting a new iPhone at the very beginning of 2026, iPhone 17e. This is the successor to this year's iPhone 16e, and it could actually be pretty exciting. It's rumored to feature a similar design to the iPhone 15 and iPhone 16 with a 6.1 inch OLED display with Dynamic Island. However, to differentiate it from the iPhone 17, it's going to stick with 60Hz and no always on display. It'll likely also stick with a similar single camera setup as the iPhone 16e. Inside will be the A19 chip from the iPhone 17, though it'll likely be binned just like the iPhone 16e's A18 chip. It should also stick with the C1 modem from the iPhone 16e, though it could gain the N1 chip from the iPhone 17 lineup and iPad Pro. And it should still start at $599, though I could see Apple bumping up the base storage to 256GB just like the iPhone 17. And we could see Apple keep the iPhone 16e in the lineup at a lower price as the new entry-level iPhone model. So depending on what you're looking for, the iPhone 17e could be pretty exciting for you. But that's probably the least exciting iPhone model coming in 2026. Now, moving into June with WWDC, Apple is expected to announce some big new Apple intelligence features with iOS 27. But if you want to experience real AI features right now, you should check out the Plod Notepin, today's sponsor. The Notepin is an AI-powered voice recorder. You can start recording during a meeting and then get a summary of what you talked about. In fact, I used the Plod Notepin for this video, and you can thank it for the chapters and captions for this video. It gave me a great AI-generated summary of all the key points I talked about a very accurate transcription, a mind map, and quantitative data. And the cool part is that I can ask Plod's AI for any clarification on any key point or topic I discussed. Of course, while my use case is pretty niche, this device can be an absolute game changer when you're on a meeting or a lecture. If you missed any key points or need to have clarification on something, the Notepin has you covered. This device is seriously cool. You can check it out right now using my affiliate link in the description. And because Black Friday is around the corner, you can get 20% off from now through December 1st. So act fast. Thank you to Plod for sponsoring today's video. Now, moving into September, Apple's going to be doing something vastly different. Ever since 2017, Apple has announced both the Pro and base model iPhones together. Before they even called it the Pro with the iPhone 8 and iPhone 10 in 2017, all the way up to the iPhone 17, 17 Pro, and iPhone Air in 2025. However, 2026 will be different, as in September, the base iPhone 18 and iPhone Air 2 will not be announced, and instead, they'll be pushed to early 2027 alongside the iPhone 18e. This is due to the iPhone lineup growing drastically in 2026 with the addition of the iPhone Ultra, which again, that's for another video. So the fall 2026 iPhone lineup will feature the iPhone 18 Pro, 18 Pro Max, and iPhone Ultra. Kind of similar to what Apple does with the MacBook Pro and MacBook Air, where the Pro gets updated first, then the Air a few months later. Similar things happen to the iPad Pro, iPad Air, and iPad as well. This goes very in line with Apple's other product strategies, especially seeing how damn good the regular iPhone 17 is. It's likely to eat into the sales of the Pro models. So, this is likely Apple's way to boosting the Pro sales even more. Now, let's get into the star of the show, iPhone 18 Pro. 
as we just got a pretty big redesign with the iPhone 17 Pro, the iPhone 18 Pro will be a pretty modest upgrade, though we could see some pretty big improvements. For one, the dynamic island is finally rumored to be shrinking, as it's remained the same size as it has since the introduction with the iPhone 14 Pro. Now, it's not entirely going away or even shrinking down to a singular hole punch. It's instead going to be just a smaller pill shape now, similar to the smaller notch we saw with the iPhone 13 coming from the iPhone 12. This will be due to some of the Face ID components going underneath the display now, something Apple has been trying to accomplish for years now, and it looks like the iPhone 18 Pro will finally achieve that. In addition, the iPhone 18 Pro will feature Apple's all-new A20 Pro chip, which will actually be a pretty big deal, as the A20 Pro will be the first 2 nanometer chip from Apple. 2 nanometer will allow for significantly greater efficiency as the transistors become even smaller. But the even bigger change is TSMC's new WMCM technology, or Wafer Level Multi-Chip Modules. This is a little hard to explain, so bear with me here. But basically, every single current Apple Silicon chip uses the Info integrated fan-out technology, where every part of the chip is very tightly packed together. The CPU, GPU, neural engine, USB 3 controller, everything is very densely packaged on a, a single die. But with WMCM, it allows these components to be built in separate dies on the same chip package. This isn't like how old Intel Max used to be with the CPU, GPU, and the respective pools of memory connected with a chipset. It's still all integrated into a compact package. But this could allow for some interesting configurations, like vertically stacking the chips to become even more condensed. Now, what does this mean for you? Well, it boils down to much greater thermal efficiency. This new WMCM technology combined with the 2 nanometer process node will allow for much greater performance than the A19 Pro, whilst also delivering much greater efficiency, which when combined with the vapor chamber cooling we saw with the iPhone 17 Pro this year, should yield pretty great performance and efficiency. But the A20 Pro isn't the full story. Apple will also bring their new custom-made C2 modem to the Pro iPhones for the first time. The C1X modem in the iPhone Air already yields some impressive performance, with it consistently outperforming the iPhone 16 Pro's Qualcomm X71 modem. However, the C1 and C1X modems do not support millimeter wave 5G, now, that isn't a particularly big deal, as millimeter wave 5G is nowhere near globally available yet, but it's been available on just about every flagship iPhone since the iPhone 12. So, Apple's been waiting to implement millimeter wave into their custom modems before putting it into pro iPhones. And next year seems like when that'll finally happen, officially marking the death of Qualcomm modems in the iPhone, seven years after Apple acquired Intel's modem business in 2019. Now, turning over to the cameras, the iPhone 18 Pro will feature some pretty major camera improvements over the iPhone 17 Pro, particularly with the main Fusion camera, which got basically zero upgrades with the 17 Pro. The main camera of the iPhone 18 Pro will feature a variable aperture. Basically, this allows you to manually control the amount of light that passes through the camera lens, allowing for greater depth of field. This used to be a feature with Samsung's Galaxy S9 back in 2018, but it was a feature too far ahead of its time back then, as the camera sensor in that phone was tiny. But fast forward 8 years, and phone camera sensors have grown in size exponentially. So, a feature like this today is significantly more practical than it was back in 2018. But that's not all. Not only is Apple revamping their lens design, they're also completely revamping the camera sensors in a way they've never done before. For the longest time, the camera sensors used in iPhones have been made by Sony. Sony's mobile camera sensors have been widely regarded as some of the best smartphone camera sensors ever. 
And believe it or not, Sony and Apple have actually had a very close relationship for decades. In fact, there was a time where Steve Jobs actually asked Sony if they wanted to have macOS 10 installed on their Sony Vio laptops. Yep, I'm not joking. However, with the iPhone 18 Pro, Apple looks to be ditching Sony's sensors in favor of sensors from their biggest competitor, Samsung. Yeah, really, Samsung. This is likely going to be just for the ultra-wide camera sensor of the iPhone 18 Pro, and likely not the Fusion or Telephoto sensors. This new camera sensor is said to feature a triple stack design, which could help reduce noise and increase dynamic range. Now, even though this will only affect the ultra-wide sensor next year, it could roll down to all four sensors of the iPhone in the future. As part of Apple's announcement into investing into U.S. manufacturing this year, they mentioned, quote, Apple is working with Samsung at its fab in Austin, Texas, to launch an innovative new technology for making chips, which has never been used before anywhere in the world. By bringing this technology to the U.S. first, this facility will supply chips that optimize power and performance of Apple products, including iPhone devices shipped all over the world. And while they haven't specifically mentioned that this will be image sensors, info from the Financial Times indicates that yes, this is likely referring to US-made image sensors. It's just pretty crazy to think that these two companies have been rivals for decades, and now they're working together now, this isn't the first time. As you probably know, Samsung has been manufacturing most OLED displays for the iPhone and other Apple products since the iPhone 10. Sometimes Apple uses other companies for their OLED displays, like LG or BOE, but it's mainly been Samsung since 2017. And now their biggest competitor is helping them manufacture their cameras now. Something that Apple very frequently markets with the iPhone, so much so that all their events are now shot on iPhone, and now Samsung's the one helping them with that. In terms of other changes with the iPhone 18 Pro, we don't know a whole lot yet. These phones are still over 10 months away, but I'm going to make some educated guesses. For one, the 2TB storage option that's currently exclusive to the iPhone 17 Pro Max will likely be carried down to the smaller iPhone 18 Pro as well. We also heard that the camera control will be revamped and simplified. It'll still feature pressure sensitivity and haptic feedback, but it'll no longer be capacitive, meaning that the pressure sensitivity will be the main way to use it now. And in terms of colors, recent reports point towards three potential color options to replace cosmic orange and deep blue. The first is a very interesting brownish coffee color, which I think will be very divisive. The second is the return of a deep purple color, similar to the iPhone 14 Pro. And last is my personal favorite, a deep new burgundy red color. Apple has said to choose at least one of these colors for the iPhone 18 Pro lineup. And I could see Apple making the aluminum material in the unibody much stronger than the iPhone 17 Pro, as many people have complained about that. Of course, we should expect these devices to be announced in September of 2026. I'm personally predicting a September 15th event, alongside the aforementioned iPhone Ultra, and of course, alongside the Apple Watch Series 12, and Apple Watch Ultra 4, along with a rumored upgrade to AirPods Pro 3. So that's everything we know so far about the iPhone 18 Pro, 18 Pro Max, and iPhone 17e. Which one of these iPhones are you most looking forward to? Let me know in the comments.